Uh, thank you everybody for coming out today. My name is Adam Scow. I am a senior consumer advocate for Consumer Watchdog. Uh, it is a very important day because we are here to talk about the impacts of oil drilling and fracking in this state and here in our community. We're going to hear from three community leaders who have long been fighting the toxic impacts of oil drilling. They're going to tell you about what life is like here in Culver City around the Inglewood oil field. We are standing at the edge of the nation's largest urban oil field, the Inglewood oil field, and uh, residents here have long suffered uh, from the impacts of this oil field. Now, the statewide context is very, very important. Uh, Governor Brown refused to take any action to curb drilling or fracking in this state. Thankfully, we have a new governor with a fresh attitude who is going to take a fresh approach to this problem, which is truly a public health problem as well as a climate problem. Uh, Gavin, governor, governor Gavin Newsom, as you know, last night issued an order to remove uh, Supervisor Ken Harris. I'm going to unmute my line. I am now unmuting my line because I understood you couldn't hear me. So I'm saying we are very excited that we have a new governor who is taking a fresh approach to this problem of drilling and fracking in our communities. Uh, last night, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom issued an order to remove Supervisor Ken Harris, who oversees or who oversaw the Division of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources. There have been many problems with that agency and the cozy relationship that they have with the oil industry that they are supposed to regulate. Consumer Watchdog a few days ago revealed via public records requests that eight of the regulators at that agency were disclosed having personal investments in the oil industry that they regulate, including Chevron, uh, Exxon, Shell, uh, Valero. This is ethically, morally wrong. We need to have an agency that is, does not have conflicts, personal biases, when it comes to regulating an industry um, such as the oil industry. In addition to revealing these conflicts, working with the Frack Tracker Alliance, we disclosed that the uh, Division of Oil and Gas has approved over 2,300 new permits so far this year in 2019. This is at a faster rate than in 2018 for new oil wells and reworking existing wells. And on top of that, they've issued about 200 frack job permits in this state. And as you may have seen in a letter from the governor to his administration last night, to his, to his, to his, uh, to his staff, he's very concerned about fracking's impacts. So today, we are saying thank you, Governor, for removing Supervisor Ken Harris, and keep going. We need you to clean house at Dogger, and we need you to stop the permits. The drilling, the fracking, the toxic emissions is what's making people's lives, making people sick, frankly. And until we put a stop to that, people are going to suffer. So I want to uh, invite a few of my speakers to come up. Uh, I want to start with uh, a champion, a local champion on this issue. Please welcome the council member from Culver City, uh, council member Daniel Lee. Excuse me. Yes. The constant uh, him, uh, we call it typing. Yes. Oh, so close to the mics, we hear that once in a while. You can say anything on the court, so I'll let it go. But now, I can't take it. In other words, oh, we've got the audio feedback's a little problematic yeah, here. He, he's got to go further away. Okay, okay, we'll try that. Star 5 for lecture mode. Star 5 for lecture mode. Yeah, Excuse me. Sorry, folks. That, you know, Okay, we're going to lecture mode. Okay, we just solved the problem. Thank you for the feedback. Daniel Lee. Literally. <laughs> uh, thank you, Adam, for that introduction. As Adam said, I'm the council member here in Culver City, and I'm very proud to be representing Culver City. Last June, we took a step to close down the portion of the Inglewood oil field that exist in Culver City. 10% we're in the process of an amortization study uh, that will end oil drilling in Culver City forever. But now it's the governor's turn because most of this oil field lies outside of Culver City. Most of it is in unincorporated Los Angeles County. And since our current County Board of Supervisors is not moving to act, to end oil drilling, to protect the health and safety of their residents, we need the governor to step in and do his job. I applaud the governor for firing Ken Harris last night. 
But if he really is the governor that takes climate change seriously, the governor that takes environmental justice seriously, then we need to stop issuing permits in California. And we, we need to end oil drilling in California to protect our future, to protect our children, and to protect many of the residents, some of whom are behind me now, who have been negatively affected uh, through health impacts by being in close proximity to oil drilling. If we take their lives seriously and we take the lives of the future generation seriously, then we need to stop oil drilling now. We're calling on Gavin Newsom right now to stop issuing oil permits. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Lee. I now like to invite a local resident who has long dealt uh, with this oil field. She lives adjacent to this oil field. Please uh, welcome Deborah Weinrock. Hi, thank you all for being here today. Uh, when I first moved into this wonderful city of Culver City 20 years ago, I thought that the pump jacks or derricks, whatever you call them, the oil wells up there were kind of cute, but in very short order, I found out they were anything but cute. At the time I was pregnant with my son and shortly after I moved in, I woke up with a terrible smell permeating my neighborhood in the middle of the night. When I asked the neighbors what was the source of the smell, they said, oh, that's usual. That comes from the oil fields. Well, like where there's smoke, there's fire. Where there's smell, there's a problem. Over the years, the smells have continued. They've worsened. Several years ago, residents of Culver Crest, which isn't terribly far from here, some of them had to vacate their homes. They were all subjected to oil leaks, gas leaks, a lot of serious problems. Um, in the meantime, um, any time there was a gas emission, a problem, I would call AQMD, that's Air Quality Management District for Culver City, sorry, for the Southern District of LA, and then they would come out to Culver City. But the problem was they usually came too late. They did a sniff test. They were all very nice, but they all came back with the same conclusion. We left it too long, and there isn't any smell. We don't smell anything. Then, several years ago, I was invited to go into the oil fields to check on the cat problem there. I met two people who were residing up there in a house that's located on, behind me. Uh, they were both very ill. What horrified me as well were the cats and the kittens that I encountered. Deformed, dying, I um, encountered open ditches, toxic water, um, it, it was disgusting. And I realized that that water, when it rains, is flowing down towards our neighborhood. In addition, my neighbors, including myself, several of them, have been diagnosed with cancer. Some are no longer with us. I'm one of the fortunate ones, and I'm the spokesperson for those who have died from cancer. Now, is there a connection between the cancer and the toxicity of the oil fields? No one knows 100% for sure. But what we do know is that science has shown that people who live in a close radius, close proximity to oil production, are more likely to encounter toxins in the form of various poisons from the gas emissions. Whether that was the cause of my cancer, I don't know 100% for sure. I know my cancer was not genetically connected, so there had to be another reason. So the question is out there, did the oil fields play a part in my cancer? I don't know that. I can't answer that. Um, I know that there have been uh, residents in my neighborhood with um, uh, respiratory problems, which are consistent with problems caused by the oil fields. Were they the only source of the respiratory problems, including my own son who encountered them when he was a child? I don't know, but it's possible that they were. I have been to different parts of the world where they have uh, wind and solar farms, and that's what I would like to see replace the oil wells. The truth is, nowadays, fossil fuels are like the manual typewriter, even the electric typewriter. They're obsolete. So I'm calling on the government to please work with us, all of us, to eliminate in due course the oil fields. We're only 10 percent here in Culver City, but we're vocal. And we're not going to stop until we have some safety behind us and throughout the oil wells. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah, so much. And just, just to reiterate, in case it wasn't heard earlier, the conflicts of interest at Dogger have been uh, very, very uh, outrageous. The fact that half, nearly half of the permits issued this year were issued to companies where the regulators had investments in, that is flat out wrong. So we are encouraged that Governor Newsom is issuing an ethics review, and we want to ensure that the permits, the next step is that the permits are put on hold. I want to introduce our next speaker, a longtime champion uh, dealing with this oil field, fighting this oil field, the founder of the Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. Please welcome Paul Ferrazzi. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank Con uh, Consumer Watchdog for doing this great reporting. And in fact, um, what they've found was also found back in 2006 and 2007 with another um, oil uh, uh, an another dogger, uh, another dogger uh, regulator. regulator. Good, good one. <laughs> Sorry, and um, and then the state auditor actually reviewed uh, all of those um, complaints, which involved uh, expediting the uh, permitting of 23 wells before the county, Los Angeles County, put a moratorium in effect in 2006 after the accidental releases. Uh, in January and February. But also with that, um, there's Ken Harris, I believe, has suppressed reports with regard to the geology of the Newport Inglewood fault, uh, in that the director of the California Geological Survey issued him a uh, memorandum telling him that with regard to their investigations of that fault, that the structural damage um, that residents were complaining about cannot be attributed to fault creep or seismic and tectonic activity along that fault line. Um, this was also reported to um, Dogger in a meeting uh, with a California Geological um, Survey geologist back in 2013. That report has actually disappeared although the oil industry's report or PowerPoint still exists as um, a, a public document. Um, so I, the whole thing with um, Dogger is this sort of um, thing has been endemic, I think, since its inception. There's also a nonprofit that only the oil industry uh, has uh, members on that consults with Dogger. So none of the environmental uh, nonprofits are allowed to participate in this, and this is where they talk about um, uh, efficient uh, extraction of uh, California resources. So we're locked out of that, even though they have like a direct link to Dogger with regard to, um, you know, their practices or what they consider. And one of the things that they were calling uh, an innovative technique is um, something called uh, underbalancing, where they will take and um, not maintain the pressure because all of these fields, because of the extraction, have had um, oil removed. So they have to continually replace that with the reinjection of water. And usually it's brine water from um, you know, lower formations. But I, I really believe that, um, that Dogger has probably done things on a criminal level with regard to suppressing these reports for the, from the California Geological Survey, uh, as well as confirmation from USGS that they agree with that. So I guess that's about it. But uh, Paul, I, I have more. Your name and title? Uh, Paul Ferrazzi, Executive Director of Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. We were one of the four litigants that challenged the county's uh, environmental impact report and community standards district back in 2008. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and now I'd like to open it up to any questions here from the press here at the press conference, and then we'll come to the line. Any questions here? With the removal of some individuals from Dogger right now, what do you think the chances are for getting into this full review and possibly a shutdown of these wells and other wells in highly urbanized areas? Excellent question. Thank you. Uh, well, as you said, uh, the governor uh, has fired Ken Harris, but we believe that it's not enough. Uh, when you hear about the history of Dogger, what's going on for decades at this agency, we need a complete uh, clean house there. We need to look at the Department of Conservation leadership. Uh, we need to look at several of the employees who have conflicts of interest. 
we understand the governor has ordered a review uh, to, to look at these conflicts of interest that we have revealed. Um, but we, at the same time, we can't wait forever. The, the community's health has to be paramount. So that's why at the same time, we need the governor to step up and to stop issuing permits while he's conducting the review. These things can happen concurrently. When you look at the idea of what uh, basically has happened with uh, the permits here and everything else like that, sort of question to this point. Are there anything in the process here at this site for additional wells, additional things that are going on? Well, we know there's been at least, uh, there's been at least five new permits issued for reworks here at the Inglewood oil field. There have also been permits issued in the Wilmington oil field. Uh, at Aliso Canyon, uh, down in Long Beach. Many permits have been issued in Kern County as well. Uh, is, Daniel, do you want to speak to any activity, anything going on with the state that you're dealing with here in Culver City? Well, um, as we mentioned before, we're not issuing new permits in Culver City and we're going through an amortization study. The problem with this oil field in particular is that 90% of it is not in Culver City and that's where the permits are being issued. So our County Board of Supervisors, if they wanted to, could hold up those permits, but since they're not, that's why we're calling on Gavin Newsom to stop issuing permits statewide while we go through this process of uh, investigating these conflicts of interest. We've known for decades that Dogger has basically been a regulatory tool of industry and not for people. And if we really want to change that, we need to stop right now and see the extent of the problem. The conflict of interest Are these, how should I put it, isolated or large investments in particular companies, or is it because these people own stock in something like an S&P 500 fund or something like that, where a balance of those naturally are petroleum and energy-based firms? So, so state law requires uh, these employees to disclose the investments they have. Now, in the past, uh, we have caught, uh, uh, there, is, there, there has been an employee caught lying, not disclosing. So these were eight people we found that had direct investments in the oil and gas industry. We can speculate, we think the problem could be more widespread, but that's really why we need the governor to take action and ask those hard questions. When you say direct investment, that's I'm getting into this now. You got an S&P 500 fund or something like that, or a spider or something like that, you can own 20, 30 shares of stock, that really is significant. If you own 500 or 1,000 shares, in Chevron, right. in mobile, in something else like that. Okay, now you got some. Well, so the deputy, to your point, the deputy director, uh, David Gutierrez, uh, had up to $100,000 in Exxon, which is a parent company of, of one of the biggest players. We had uh, uh, other employees with uh, up stock in Chevron, uh, up to 10, and they'd have to declare up to 10,000 or up to 100,000. There were several of these eight employees had stock levels up to 10,000 or $100,000. and. We're, we filed an FPPC complaint to look into the legality of this, but in, in our view, that's ethically wrong. Any other questions here before we go I to the mean, line? I mean, is there, is there, though, an ethical rule on the books in California forbidding specifically those regulators from owning stock in those industries? Well, there is a personal conflict of interest law, uh, 78, Government Code Section 78100, uh, and what the FPPC will need to determine is whether uh, it crossed the line, whether David Gutierrez having up to $100,000 in stock, the decisions he made, the standard is, is legalistic, and they need to investigate that. We, apparent, it is apparent to us that that is a problem. Uh, we need the lawyers at FPPC to make a determination. How, when you're talking about the people who own stock in these companies, out of the total membership of the dog regulatory family, how many actually had conflicts in your mind? Of, of the eight regulators that we, we uncovered? Well, we, we've listed the eight regulators that we felt was inappropriate. We just uh, lost the line, so we have to redial in. Let me, can I give you the phone? To, we're going to fix that phone. Okay. Any other questions here? We're going to try to fix the line. Is there any significance to the boneyard also being a place where you bury dead people? No, but it is, there, it does have significance because, in fact, uh, an abandoned well started leaking here. Uh, back in uh, 2010, well, there was a September 28th, 2010, and more recently down the street over here. Say oh. Mike uh, the, the significance is in uh, September of 2010, the 28th to be exact, uh, an abandoned, badly abandoned well started leaking here in the dog park. Eventually it was, um, it was plugged or replugged by the old operator, Plains Exploration and Production. But um, 
They were only saying methane was coming up. Methane is odorless. You could actually smell VOCs, although our noses are pretty sensitive to VOCs. But don't, none, no measurements were taken that I can see by AQMD that, um, you know, or, or sumo canister samples that actually uh, identified what was coming up outside of methane.